Welcome to uh, Queen's University today. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, Stan Scott, I'm Professor of Computational Science here at Queen's. Currently I'm Dean for Internationalization in Engineering and Physical Sciences, but before that I was Head of uh, the School of Electronics, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. It's a particular pleasure to welcome you to this new computer science building, which was started while I was head of school and finished after I left. So it's uh, great to see uh, the building being used for an event such as this. So we have lots of different people here, sponsors, who I'll say something more about uh, at the end. Belfast Linux User Group, students and staff from Queens, employees from local companies and speakers. So this is all about uh, free open source software. Um, and it's more than just technical issues. I'm particularly pleased to see that there's a, uh, a discussion on licensing, which, which again I'll come to uh, in a moment. As Johnny has said, the talks are to be short, but hopefully spark interest for further development. So I have a couple of things to say. Uh, and I'll try and be short. But I thought I'd ask you a question, first of all. Queen's has been promoting open source software for X years. And the question is, what is X? Two, five, 10, 20, 30, or 50? So let me go in the other direction. How many of you think 50 is the correct answer? Put your hand up. 30. Oh, so we had 150, did we have a one? We had 150, okay, 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, five, two. Okay, so the bulk went for the 20, which is in the middle. Uh, I don't know whether that was significant. Most of you here probably weren't born 50 years ago. Um, so Queen's, uh, one of my other roles and why I have a particular interest in this is I'm editor of a, a journal called Computer Physics Communications. Computer Physics Communications is kind of unique in that when it was set up, it published descriptions of open source software in physics. And it maintained, or still maintains, a library of physics open source software. And the library was established in 1969. So there's an extract from Nature, uh, and also the uh, computer bulletin. So you were right over there, well done. <laughs> I don't know if you read any of those extracts in 1969. Um, so in Nature, an international library of computer programs and physics, established Queen's University Belfast, uh, with a grant from the then Science Research Council. And the idea was that the library would acquire and store computer programs and supply a copy of each to regular subscribers. It was set up by Phil Burke, who was professor of mathematical physics in the applied maths department. And in those days, uh, the subscribers were typically large research labs. So CERN, for example, ETH in Zurich, the Atlas Lab in, uh, at the Rutherford Lab in uh, near Harwell, the Cullen Lab, and so on. Los Alamos. So 23 subscribing libraries in, in 1970. I was just delving back over some, uh, some old reports in my, in my room. Uh, in those days, the, the contents came in on cards, punched cards, posted in. Um, Requests, I thought, was interesting. Uh, if you put in a request for a program or uh, a subscriber, a magnetic tape was written, uh, which, again, I thought was interesting, was allowed to cool in the laboratory and then post it the following day. So a request came in by post, you wrote a mag tape, you left it overnight to cool, and then you posted it back. Um, slightly different now. I even find in my room uh, from 1970 um, 
paper tip. So this is a paper tip that was posted from the University of Sydney in 1970. This was uh, an Algol program. On, the, on your left there, this is the current interface to, to the library. Uh, and the interface hasn't changed much, it's just easier to read and access now. So that it tells you about the authors, name of the program, catalog identifier, the journal reference where the description is, is held, the language, this was in Algol, the computer it ran on and was tested on, and the kind of problem that it, that it solved. And on the right is the actual Algol program, so that's when it came into Queen's in 1970 on that paper tip, and this is what it looks like, looks like now. And each of these programs has a catalog identifier, four character. Um, this one is uh, AACE, I think. Uh, we have some interesting ones. There's one particular one which is called ABUG. A bug, which I thought was interesting for a piece of open source software. So that was started in 1969. It's still going. There's over 3,000 items of you know, significantly large pieces of computational science software. Um, the library has been maintained here in Queens over the last uh, almost 50 years. And we're now migrating it to uh, a new platform which is owned by Elsevier, the uh, Mendeley Data Repository. About a year ago, the library became completely free. Up until then, you had to pay a subscription to get access to the library. It's now totally free. And with Mendeley, all the entries in the Mendeley Repository have to be covered by one of these licenses, typically MIT, Apache, uh, CC, BSD, or uh, GNU. One of our difficulties is that, uh, as you can imagine, some of those programs, you've seen the one from 1970, people didn't have email addresses in the early days. We don't have any means of contacting them. Some of them are probably dead. Uh, we have a licensing problem with that software. <laughs> Uh, it needs to be put on the Mendeley data repository and it needs to be covered by one of these licenses and it's not quite clear how we can do that. If anybody here has a good idea, please let me know. We also have software, some of which is, let's say, got an MIT license. We want to add extra bits to it which are covered by an Apache license. That presents problems. So there's a whole range of issues around licensing. So as the previous slide said, it's not just technical issues. There are uh, other issues as well. So given my background and interest, I'm really pleased that you're here today and it's great to see you. I'm not going to say anything more other than to uh, thank the sponsors, um, Allstate, Van Rath, Flax and Teal, Open Data NI and the Tomorrow Lab. Uh, particular thanks to the staff in uh, ECS, Brian Fleming in particular, and all the other IT and uh, office staff who have, who have helped out. Belfast Linux Group, particularly Phil and William. I don't know Phil and William, or Phil and William here? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, and Doris, and uh, all of the speakers, and there's a couple who've come uh, longer distance than most, uh, from Limerick, is he here yet? No. And Matt from Arizona, is Matt here? Not yet. Okay. Is he? <laughs> Whereabouts in the world is he? Okay. Thanks, Catherine. <clears throat> okay. And finally, to uh, to Johnny for all his uh, organisation. So you're very welcome. I'm very pleased that you're here in Queens, and I hope you have a very uh, useful and engaging day. Thanks very much, Stan. Um, <clears throat> if you thought that was going back in time, the next speaker is going to go back even further about uh, sort of open source and the and where it all started. So uh, Phil Weir here is from Flax and Tail. He's a stalwart of the Belfast Linux user group and uh, has worked in the university here as well. And this, this event wouldn't have happened without Phil as well. So uh, it's great to have him here. <laughs>